You all know this one. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by his blood. Join hands with Jesus as we travel. You know, um, I don't know why October gets chosen as Past Appreciation Month because we have a, we appreciate Rick and Cindy because we've been here one year. <laughs> this is our one year anniversary here. So, the <laughs> praise God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you're still upright. We're still upright. Yeah. Hey, it, it's kind of rocky at first there at first meeting. <laughs> but, but, but that's okay. It's all good. <laughs> but you know, I, I can't speak for all of you. Obviously, each of you have your own relationship and your own stories and, and the things that you have loved about Rick and Cindy's presence here. I know as a grandpa, it means a lot. I told Rick this story the other night. We were in one of the little Hispanic restaurants in Siloam, and there was a poster up for the meetings going on in Siloam right now. And I called um, Emmeline over. I said, Emmeline, I said, I want you to look at something on this bulletin board. I said, do you see anybody there that you know? She looked at that, and she got this look of wonder on her face. She said, that's Pastor Rick. <laughs> and, but... <laughs> it means something for me when my granddaughter is friends with my pastor, my pastor's wife. And that is something that all of you have similar stories. And so Rick and Cindy, you can't put um, enough in a card, or enough words, enough anything else. But we are so thankful that you are here as our pastor, our friend, our pastor's wife. Um, this only means something to Rick, my Uber driver, um, all sorts of different things. And um, so we just uh, want this to be a token of our appreciation for you guys. Okay. okay. You, you can have it. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. It, Brian, thank you. Cindy and I are so blessed. Amen. We love it here. We love you. We feel like we're family. Uh, we're getting to know you uh, one person at a time. If we, if we have not got to know you really, really good, it's because come up to us. We want to get to know you and because that's our goal. To get, we're part of the family of God. And what an honor it is to serve you. And that's what we're here for, to serve you. Yes. Yeah. And, and I just want to say, I'm thinking back over the last year, I, cannot, I can't even remember all of the, the, uh, the food and the gifts and things like that were brought over to help us ease our way into oh, our, yeah. our neighborhood. I gained 10, 15 pounds. We're, we're, just now start <laughs> <laughs> we're just now starting to turn the curve and go back the other way after a yeah. year. But um, anyway, we love you all very, very much, and it's a pleasure um, to serve here as your pastoral team. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. And the best is yet to come. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you all very much. Let's pray. Let's begin our worship. Dear Heavenly Father, already this morning we have studied and sung, we've laughed, we've acknowledged people, but now we want our attention to focus solely on you. May this worship time honor and glorify you, and may we be drawn close to you because we have spent time with you. Amen. Thank you, Sylvia. You know, this is a really, really special Sabbath day. Um, we, our young people make all the difference here in Springtown. They make all the difference in the world to us. Uh, I was talking to someone out in the, in the foyer a while ago, and, and she was saying, she said, I can tell when the children are not here, it's just not the same. It's, and uh, I think she even might have used, even used the word, church is just kind of dead when the children are not here. So we, we like to hear our children, uh, mom and dads with children, we don't mind hearing that little voice. 
because it lets us know our church is alive and well. So don't get all panicky and, and thinking, you know, I know some parents that, that maybe even might leave because they, they feel like that their children, you know, they, they make more noise than what they want. Hey, we want to hear your children. It's good to hear young people. It means our church is alive and it's breathing and kicking. So we want to recognize our young people. What we have did, uh, you might notice a lot of our young folks have name tags on. Now, it's our goal here at Springtown that we are one big family, right? So we need to get to know our children. If you come up to one of these children and you know them by name, it means they are somebody to you. And so we want them to know that they matter and that we care about them. And so uh, what I'm going to do here and is for the children's story time is the children are going to tell their own story, right? So I'm going to call, uh, we got, uh, Reagan, can you come up here? Or can, okay, Reagan is right here with her mom. This is Reagan, everyone. And, and so maybe say your name if you can. Just Sarah. Huh? Just Sarah. Dennis. Dennis? Okay. Elizabeth. Elizabeth? Um, my name is Ronnie. Rodney? Okay. Adeline. Might, you say it? Adeline, say it. Adeline. Adeline. Um, What's your name? David. Can everybody kind of see them a little bit? Okay. Because these are these are your these are your children. Your children. Part we're family here. Mariella. Mariella. Okay. All right. <laughs> Evelyn. Samuel. Samuel. Jack. Jack. Maya. Maya. Lily. Lily. Oh. <laughs> I know who this is. This is my very special Emmeline. And that is my name. May. Okay. And? Nick. Nick. Okay. Did I leave any? Okay. All right. Right a bit. Okay. August. 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 Okay. You know what? These are our children. Our young people, and we're going to have uh, the rest of the service is going to kind of be a contribute. To, uh, we're just to them. We want them to know how special they are and and how much they are love us. So just know this right here: Jesus loves you very, very much. And you've heard us say, church is not the same without you. So we need you here every every Sabbath. We need you here, young people, very much. Let me pray for the young people. Okay, uh, would you care? Would you like to say anything? Well, okay, I was going to yeah. say that, you know, when he, he called me Wednesday and told me what we were going to do today, and um, I was trying to think of something to say. The first thing that came to mind is when I see children, I think of what faith should be like. Yeah. Faith should be like a child, very simple, very um, undoubtful, trusting. Um, that's what I, I think when I see kids. When I see kids in church, I know that there's hope. There's hope, hope for our future, hope like that, that, you know, the Word of God will get out. Yeah. And then last of all, there is unconditional love that children have is just totally awesome. Yeah. You know, and that brings me to the last verse in 1 Corinthians 13. Yeah. It says, faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is love. Amen. Thank That's you. That's what children are to Yeah. Be. Thank you so much. You know, when we look at our young people and when we hear our young people we know that our church is alive. We know we've got hope for tomorrow when we've got young people. If you go to a church and you don't see any young people and you don't hear any young people, guess what? That church is dead. Yeah, yeah it's dying. It's a dying church without young people. We need young people, and that means we need, we need young mom and dads too, right? So you're very, very, very important to us. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father in heaven, thank you for our young people. Thank you for blessing us with young people. Thank you that this church is alive. It's well. It's breathing, Lord. And we thank you for that. And we ask for your blessings. We ask for your anointing. We ask, Lord, that we can be a, uh, a, a, a circle of protection for these young people. That we, could, that we could watch over them. And we could keep them. And, and that you'd give us special instructions on all of us joining together, raising these young people. May we be support to them. May we be strength to them. And we thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Praise God. It's good to see each one of you here today. It's good to be seen. Amen. Um, let me just try this out. God is good. And all the time. And we didn't even practice that. We did great. Praise God. We did good. 
every one of you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer one more time. Father in heaven, we're here. We are your children. Would you remind us today how much you love us? We pray for your Holy Spirit. Lord, we pray for unity. We pray for love. We pray that, that you would teach us, Lord, what it means to be part of the family of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Family of God. Life is like a ladder. That's a good opener, isn't it? Life is like a ladder. Picture that. We're climbing that ladder. Each one of us are on a different ring of the ladder. Some of us have been climbing the ladder a little bit longer than others have been climbing the ladder. But we're all on the ladder. Every, every single one of us. Now picture in your mind a very tall, tall, tall ladder going up against this wall. And you're climbing it. Sometimes it's hard to climb, right? Sometimes there's things going on in our lives. Sometimes there's struggles. But we're climbing. We're not giving up. We're continuing to climb. Wouldn't it be a tragedy if we got to the very top of the ladder and figured it out that we had been climbing the wrong wall? If we've been all, life, all of our whole life, we're climbing that ladder, we're working, we're struggling, and we find out that we've been climbing the wrong wall. One life and you missed it. One life. And so with. Your relationship with Jesus Christ, young people, your relationship with Jesus Christ is the very most important thing in life. It's really the only thing that really matters. If we miss out on, in, if we miss out on Him, we are missing out on everything. You can think that you, you've made it. You've accomplished everything. Maybe you've worked hard. Maybe you've got a big house and, and a, a ski boat. And I'm not picking on anybody here. but Because uh, I'm, I'm not. I used, uh, but, but just maybe you think. But let me tell you what. If you have missed out on Jesus Christ. You have missed out on everything. He is the truth. He is the life. And He is the way. He is our everything. If you're not connected to Him, you're climbing the wrong wall. It's really that simple. Uh, Ephesians chapter 1. If I get the guys to help me out. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 21 through 23. God has placed Jesus far above. Far 21 through 23. That's okay. Uh, Far above all principalities and powers and might and dominion in every name that is named. Not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he has put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body. So, so, so the church is the fullness of Him who fills all in all. Did you get that? The Bible is saying here that when you connect with the church, what are we really connecting to? The body of Christ. When we connect, when we come together and we connect to the church, we're part of the body of Christ because the church is the body of Christ. You know, life can be pretty tough sometimes. Especially, I mean, I couldn't imagine. It was pretty tough when I grew up. I mean, there was a lot of temptations out there. There was a lot of struggles in life. It was pretty tough. But I couldn't imagine growing up right now. With, with all the struggles that, that young people go through. With all the different stages of life. I mean, you know, us, I don't know if any of us older folks would really, we say, oh boy, with them were the good old days I'd like to go by. But I tell you what, there were some struggles going on right here. When you went from one age to another, when you, when you, when you, you know, at different ages, I'm mean, trying to figure out who you are and how everything kind of comes together, there's, it's pretty tough to be a young person. 
It, it's pretty tough, isn't it? I mean, you remember some of the struggles that, that, you, that you probably had to go through yourself. And so, I could, it, it's, it's not that easy. So, so God, God knows that it's tough. He knows, he knows that it's, He knows, what, so He's given us, He's given you the church. You know, this church, young people, God's given you this church. This is your church. Your church. Your, your connection to the body of Christ. Your, your helper to, to be there for you. To, to help you through your struggles, through what you're going through. You know, one of the best ways to get strength, and it does. I mean, it's, this is not new what you're going through, young people. Uh, and one of the best things that you can do to get strength and help and support when you're going through these hard times right here is surround yourself with a church family. To surround yourself with a church family. I mean, to, put, to connect to this church family. Connect yourself with an old person. That's right. Find you somebody. Find you somebody that you know cares about you. Seriously, these words I'm sharing with you will help you out a whole lot as you get older. Find you an older person that you can tell really cares about you, that 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 cares about what's going on in your life, and you and you connect with them. Someone that's got your back. Somebody that you knows on your side. Somebody that you really know wants you to make it. Someone that accepts you for who you are. That you don't have to put on some kind of mask or any, anything like we have to do out there. Somebody that, that, that cares for you personally. Find you one of those people right there. They've got a lifetime of wisdom that they can share with you. They, they've been down your road that, you, that you've been down. You know, you can... And, and I want to tell you what, young people, you're, you're going to go through some times, and you're going to go through some struggles. I can't imagine going through puberty again, you know, if I can say that. <laughs> you, know, the, 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 you know, all this stuff going on in your head, you know, all these things, all this craziness and everything. I can't imagine. You know, but, so, but you can handle, you know, things get, you know, when you're going through times like that, stress really seems to peak out. Things really seem to get a hold of you that might not normally would have bothered you. But when you're going through something like that, it's so much easier to go through it when you've got somebody to go through it with you. When, when you know that you don't have to go through this by yourself. That you've got somebody there. Besides, it's not good for us to be alone. It's not. You know what the enemy likes to do? And he's doing it to young people all the time now. He, he's, he's causing them to go in isolation. They just kind of go, they, they, they just kind of box everybody else. Nobody understands me. Nobody cares. And, and, they, and they box themselves out. That's exactly what the enemy wants you to do. He wants you to try to fight this battle on your own. You don't have to do that. You've got Jesus. You've got a church family that wants to help you with what you're going through. The Bible says that we, it's not good for us to be alone. We are wired by God to need each other. We're, we, we, we need each other. We're relational. We, we were created by God, for God, in His image, so that we could have a relationship with God. That's who we are as a people. We need each other. We especially need the body of Christ. We especially need our church family. So much. The very first thing that God said after creating Adam, He said, it's not good that man be alone. Now, I'm not trying to marry your young people off, mom and dads. <laughs> but but I, I'm not, I, I think we can broaden this text here, can't we? We really can. I think, I think we need each other. We need each other through the days and time that we live in. Young people, young people, have I got all the young people's attention? We need you here at Springtown. I, I, if, you, if you are old enough to understand what I said, then you should know we need you. You are a very important part of this church. You know, we would... Okay, bear with me here. We would get really, 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 really old-fashioned if it were not for you. <laughs> we would get that way. We, we would. And, uh, you know, you, you, young people, you keep us young. You, you, you keep us young. We, we tend, we, 
and I think everybody would re- could agree with this, we tend to go to the extremes without each other. And I'm going to pick on a, a, a word everybody's heard. I'm going to say music. I mean, we do. I mean, we tend to go on the extremes when we don't have each other to keep us balanced. I mean, we're either over here, and you're going, oh, or we're over here going <laughs> like this. We, we need each other to keep us balanced, to keep us relevant, to keep us alive, keep, to keep us fresh, to keep us in a true worship and not just my worship. You know, we need each other so, so that we can blend together as a family. So we need our young people desperately. And so, uh, teenagers. Uh, you, teenagers. <laughs> oh, I'm scared of that one. <laughs> teenagers, you need us. You need us. And we need you. Uh, it, it helps us uh, dare to learn to look at things from a different point of view. It helps us. You help us do that. You need us. You need us because believe it or not, one day, a long time ago, we were your age. <laughs> we were. We were really your age at one time. And we still remember some of the struggles that you go through. We still remember some of the things that was in our head when we were your age. Some of the things that we had to get through. Some of the hardships. So we know the confusion. You know, trying to figure out life and everything like that. I want you to know, teenagers, it's, it's not God's plan that you do it alone. He's, you, you're, he's given you a church, a body, He's given you Jesus. He's, he's given you all these different kind of, kind of things that will equip you and that will help you. It's so hard to try to make this on you, by yourself. Don't try to carry the load by yourself. Don't try to carry the, the burden by yourself. Connect with the body of Christ. Someone, again, that you feel safe with. Someone that you know that cares. Someone that you can talk it out. It's good. I want you to know it's good to verbalize. These things, these emotions that have built up inside of you, it's good to get them out. It's good to get them out, uh, to verbalize them. It's good to talk about them. It's good to pray about it It, with someone that you know that really cares. And, And also, young people. We know you're not perfect. <laughs> we, we don't expect you to be perfect. And, and guess what? We're not perfect either. We're, we're not perfect either. And we sure weren't perfect when we were your age. And we've not arrived yet. That's right. We have not arrived. We're all still learning. We're all still going down that road. And we're going down together. But one thing you can know for sure is we care about you. We care about you. You know, don't think if, if you've done this or done that or you're doing this or things are going on in your head, don't think that, that we're going to think down of you or anything like that. We care about you. And we love you and we want you to make it. So, every one of us have made a, a lot of mistakes. So, I want, I want to talk. Can I talk real to you, uh, young people? I want to really talk real. I know that right now, that you have lots of friends out there. We live in a day and age right now through social media where we're connected more now than we've ever been before. uh, And I'm seeing seeing this happen, especially with our young people now. Their way they have friends are different than the way that we used to have friends. And so uh, it's easy to fall into this trap of thinking that your friends and the people that really care about you are the ones out there in social media land. The ones hiding behind a mask and you get to hide behind your mask and and, and you paint the picture that you want everybody to see to you. That you want everybody to see. But what I want to say, and please take this to heart, in this church right here, in this church, in this Springtown church right here, You've got relationships that you can't get out there. You've got support right here that you can't get out there. You've got real help in here. People that really care for you. 
those relationships out there will come and go. The relationships that you make right here in this church will last forever. Amen. We're in this for the long run. Amen. We're in this to see you make it. We know that there's going to be ups and downs, but we're here to support you and get you all the way through whatever you're going through in your life. This church family will help you make it. You know why we do this? Yeah. Oh, and Let me say that. Even if you're not cool, we still love you. That's right. We think you hang the moon just the way you are. You don't have to put on that face. We love you just the way you are. You know why? Because we are part of the family of God. We are, we are family in Christ Jesus. And that's why we do this. We're family. The body of Christ. Now, it takes... And this is something very important. Everybody, please listen up right here. It takes all the body to be the body. Can I say that again? It takes all the body to be the body. All generations, all ages. It takes everybody, every one of us. I, I got another scripture. Romans chapter 12 and uh, picking up in verse 4. Romans chapter 12. I'm going to pick up in verse 4 and I'm going to read through the first part of verse 6. Yeah, uh, Romans chapter 12. And I'll go ahead and get started here. For as many, many have members in one body, but... For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function. So we, being many, are one body in Christ, and individually, and individually members of one another, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. Are you getting the picture here? We are all important in the body of Christ. Every, everyone matters in the body of Christ. And, and, and this is so important here. Church is not an event. Church is not an event. It's not an event. It's not something that you come to two or three times a month and say, I've been to church. It's, it's so much more. It's something church is something you belong to. Church is, is something that you're connected to. It's like a limb to your body. It's something that's very important uh, because you matter in church. You're important in this church. You belong to this church. You're needed in this church. This is, this is not something that's passive. This is something that you got to connect to. That, that, you, that you connect with. You know, none of us, none of us are the whole body. You understand that? None of us, none of us are the whole body alone. We, we all are parts of the body. Now, I want you to picture this. I'm just a talking head. That's all I am. Picture that in your mind. It would, I wouldn't do a picture a talking head. I would not be much use without the rest of the body. Right? Friends, as a pastor, I get to get up and share in front of you, but I'm only part of this body. I can only, I'm just a talking head. Friends, there's so many people that are involved in the body. Every single one of you. God has given every single one of you a gift. Every single one of you a talent. Every one of you make a difference in the body of Christ. No, no body part can say to the other body part, Oh, you're not needed. You're not as important as I am. You can't, can, you just picture, can you just picture a hand you know, telling the rest of the body, You're not as important as I am. Or I saying that. No. Everyone is important in the body of Christ. Every single one of you, no matter what age you are, every single one of you are important. All of us. Now, you might be thinking this. Well, I just feel like I'm a toe. <laughs> Have you ever seen anybody try to walk without toes? You know what happens? They don't have any balance. We need balance. We need everybody in the church. And I'll tell you something else. We need to hear your response. Don't let, we want to hear the response from everybody. 
This is everyone's church. It's, it's, the, it's the young people, young, young children's church. It's the teenager's church. It's the young adult's church. This is everybody. This is the older people's church. It's, it's everybody's church so we can stay balanced. And, and speaking of a toe, if you just think you're a toe, when's the last time you stumped your toe? <laughs> it hurts. Toes make a difference too. Everybody makes a difference in, in the body of Christ. Every single person makes a difference in the body of Christ. So, young people, teenagers, children, teenagers, and young adults, and, and young parents, and older, younger people, and I can go on and on. <laughs> we want you to know, young people, that you're loved. We want you to know here at Springtown that you are greatly loved by us, that you're greatly needed by us, and that you're most important, that you're greatly loved by Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus loves you. You matter to God. He cares about you very much. And Springtown is your home. This is your home. This is your church. We're not complete without you. This, this, this and, and I'll go, don't, don't ever leave us because you're thinking that you don't matter because you do matter. Don't ever leave us because we will never be complete without you. We'd be just a, a disabled body trying to maneuver around because we need each other. Now, what I'd like to do, I've, I've, I've got some, I'm just a talking head. So I want some more folks. I've, got, I've asked some people to come up, and Shirley, you're the closest to me. Come on up, Shirley. And then, and then I, I, I'd ask uh, uh, Jim. Jim, if you'd come up too. And Camden. Where's Camden at? Camden, come on down, Camden. And, um, I, and, and then Daisy. I have not forgot about Daisy. Um, <laughs> Daisy is very special. I, I want, I've asked them to come up and just kind of share. Come on, Jim. You can break the water. You want Camden to go first? He's the youngest. You want to let the youngest go first? Come on, Camden. Sh Camden, this, does everybody know Camden? Okay, introduce yourself, Camden. Hi. Um, I've been here for, I'm guessing, about four years at this church. I've really liked it here. I'm excited about the new church that's being built around here, and I'd say most of you guys know, probably know me. <laughs> I'm 14 years old, and I would say... Last name, Murphy. <laughs> Camden, Camden has been through a whole lot in his life. And um, I, after visiting with his family and everything and, and sharing all that Camden's been through, he's a quite remarkable young man to be the... I mean, you look at this guy, he's been through the fire. But, but just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, he come through the fire and you can't smell the smoke on him. He, he doesn't look like what he's been through. And, and, and so what do you contribute being, I mean, look, I mean, you are a picture of health. You've got a glow. You're, you're, you're very polished. What, what do you contribute uh, to your help getting where you're at right now? Well, when you say that I went through a lot, I would say that if someone told me that, I wouldn't know what they're saying because... When I had all those problems, like foot surgeries, having problems myself, I would say that I didn't go through anything because I feel like God blessed me so much that that mm -hmm. I wouldn't say that it was any problem in my life. As a matter of fact, I say it is a blessing. Did you hear what he just said? God, God used what he had to go through to make him to the young man that he is today. Praise God. What does it mean to have a family, church family? Family of God. What's it mean to be part of the family of God to you? It really is great because through those times, I, besides my own family, I really had no one to really visit with. And I do admit, when I wasn't there, I was a bit shy. Mm -hmm. I was about new to this church by the time that happened. Um, one of my Sabbath school teachers, she volunteered to say, hey, do you want these kids that you're friends with to come and meet you and, you know, to spend time with you, you know? get you comfortable talking to people again. Praise I was God. a bit shy. 
Yeah. I did say no, but I do really appreciate the fact that she was thinking about me during that time. Praise God. The body of Christ. Camden, thank you. Hey, everybody get to know this young man. He is a sharp guy. He's part of your family. Thank you, Camden. Appreciate you. God bless you. See which one of these adults have enough courage to get up here. He's shy and he got up here first. Okay, come on up, Jim. Jim's not shy and he loves young people. So uh, we, we lead uh, the primary with uh, the Wilsons and uh, they're a talented family, but Yes, they are. How, how that came to pass, um, I was in the steering committee four or five years ago, I guess, and uh, Shirley and Dre retired, and my kids were not in primary yet, and the, everybody was kind of just kicking the gravel, no one would make eye contact, and uh, to, to that point, I'd, I'd always been in the kids' Sabbath school in the cradle roll and kindergarten, but I was more of a bouncer instead of a, a leader. <laughs> and so, uh, so, so I kind of, I was like, oh. It was like in the fall, I remember that. And I was like, uh, I think Judy Kane and I would do that. And so uh, we did it. And so we just moved, I think, I think Dre and Shirley committed to finishing that year out. So I just started going down there by myself to see what went down down there. Yeah. So well, I, I kind of got a game plan, and I did my own little tweaking. And then we just – Jack and Bella all moved – we all moved down, like, the first year, and we took over in there. And uh, But I, I, I will say this, a uh, couple things. You know, Pastor Tony, he, he kind of got us going. We have phenomenal music in there. And now, yes. the, now the Wilsons – they lead out in there. They're, I mean, Madeline's in there. They're talented. I, I, I did come to come to our Sabbath school sometime if you want a change of music. It, it's very good, very religious. But I'll also say, um, for me, you know, it's a it's a task that has to be filled being in that room. Yeah. And we're the ones doing it, and the Wilsons are the ones doing it. But we end up being the ones blessed. You know, yeah. it's it's pretty cool. Um, we're getting to know these these kids, yes. you know, and and to see, you know, at like Camden, you know, to, to see, you know, uh, Andrew and Ryan and yes. you know Gracie, see, just see them move up, and we we have that bond that hasn't left, you know. And this just this morning, you know, Friday was color day at school, and the the kids were talking. They're like, "Did you know that Camden's the fastest guy in the school?" <laughs> like, I would never guess that. Who is Camden? Really. Camden. Yeah, he's the fastest wow, guy. He's the fastest guy in the school. He's given everything he went through. Yeah, and I'm not gonna God lie. God turned it into good. I'm not gonna lie. You know, pride's not a good thing, but and he's not my kid, but I was proud. And and that's how I feel about these kids. I'm proud yeah, of them. Praise and, God. Uh, I hope I've helped make their lives better, but yeah. they've made mine better. So yeah. uh, I yeah. If you need something to do, get involved. There's there's plenty of slots to fill. Yeah. You know, and, it, and I'll, I'd also say another thing. I, I kind of see myself like Dre retiring at some point, but my hat is off to the Heimels, to the Shirleys, to the, to the Teresas. Yeah. You know, Karen Ramsey. These, these yes. guys have had kids that are got babies, and they're still helping out in these programs. Praise and, God. And I, I guess they just want to be blessed more than the rest of y'all. I don't know, but my, my hat is off to them, you know. Yeah. And uh, our, our Sabbath school, our Sab school programs, are, it's just. Uh, it's the real deal, and I, I, I'm, I'm fortunate to be a part of it. Amen. So. Jim, thank you. Yep. You, know, I, you know, I just want to say something about Jim here. I'm gonna, I love to talk about people. And, uh, <laughs> um, and Jim, Jim uh, has got a gift, and that's being able to, to, to connect with young people. He's got a gift at that. He does it very well, Jim, and I, I'm just confirming that uh, it's God's glory. I know that I've noticed it even connected with my boys. And, and everything, he, he, he's able to do that. He's, he's just got a gift at that. So thank you for that ministry. Shirley, everybody loves Shirley. First time I come here, she was telling the, the story about her dog. You know, the one that tears up everything. Is he any better now? He's getting better. He's getting better. Okay, good, good. <laughs> he's, almost ready, ago. he's almost ready to meet the church family. So <laughs> we're going to be bringing him here. Um, when I thought about this, I was thinking about you know, things that go together, uh, you think of one and you automatically think of the other, like cookies and milk, cornbread and beans, macaroni and cheese, mm. 
soup and cottage cheese. <laughs> cottage cheese, bring your own. <laughs> Springtown Church and kids. They just yeah. go together. Yeah. And you know, as long as we've had Springtown Church, there have always been kids and active kids. Not just yeah. kids, we've had active kids. Kids that spring into action with Sabbath school, with our church service, with camp meeting, with work bees, kitchen work. We always have kids around. Our kids are everywhere and they always have a smile on their face, even if sometimes we don't know their names and we call them by another name. One of the things that fills my heart every time I make it to this chair is I look around and I see women raising children and teaching classes that when we started were setting in not much bigger than that, sitting in these chairs now with their head barely above the chair. I see that and I think, my God, is awesome. Look at these kids. Yes. They've grown up in this church and they're teaching now their own kids and their friends kids it's just amazing praise god discipleship Sorry. that's okay but sometimes they don't we we call them by the wrong name or we don't know their name which we need we're going to get better at that but i guess that you kids sometimes have that problem too because i witnessed that at camp meeting i saw nick go up to Bob Dykes and said, hey, Fluffy, what are <laughs> hey, you doing? Hey, hey, who? Fluffy. Fluffy. <laughs> and okay. I, Bob Dykes has always been Fluffy to many, many Fluffy. kids in this church. And they kind of had a little uh, teasing moment there. Fluffy. But that. you know, it's really special when we see you kids get up during church or um, even in your own programs. When I went to the program a uh, couple of weeks ago at the church and I saw so many kids up there from Springtown, it makes us just glow. We just enjoy seeing you active and being up front, even though it might be scary moments, but we really enjoy seeing you guys up front. And when our kids are not here, it might be in the summertime when you're on vacations with mom and dad, or you have a adventure or pathfinders and you guys are gone the church is quiet yeah and I'd like to say it's too quiet yes. so um, peanut butter and jelly peanut butter and jelly apple pie and ice cream mm -hmm. and springtown kids in springtown amen sure it's a is. great Sabbath at springtown when the kids are in the house yeah. amen thank you Shirley mm -hmm. Miss Daisy See, we all love you, every single one of us. <laughs> oh, you do. That's good. I don't do the spur of the moment thing. I don't do the. the I very the weeks seldom of ask people on either. the spur of the moment. <laughs> do I, Shelley? <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing at this stage of my life. You've seen the sequence of the people. I'm representing the seniors, I think. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, a joy every week for, uh, we enjoy the, the uh, children's story and watching the little kids come through to collect their, their dollars. And these are Maya and Lily. These are our yes. little friends who started a long time ago when, uh, Mr. Mike, would he wouldn't just give them a dollar. He had to trade off for something. Oh. What was it? I would either give him a hug or say thank you. Ah, there you go, Mike. And so everybody on our row gets a hug. The rest of you just get thank yous, but we're, <laughs> we're, we're glad to have it. We came here a little over 11 years ago to watch our grandkids finish growing up. We had to work until then. And it's been a joy to be here. It's a couple of them away at school, and now Weston's getting a, 
a professional life and a personal life. Got him, got him, got him a woman too. Yeah. So it's been a joy to watch them. Found I, her at church. That's true. <laughs> Um, I think of different kids that we've watched grow up over the years, and I'd like to um, pay respect to um, Lexi and uh, Ashton Crone, who um, here somewhere. somewhere have been taught since they were yeah. children to be respectful Praise of God. older people. Yes. And whenever they're in town, they always make sure to touch base with us. It's usually here at church, but they always acknowledge oh. that that's... Uh, uh, make, it makes us feel warm that they still think of us. As we think of them often, and we pray Amen. for all the kids. Uh, kids are a joy. They're a responsibility. I think mm -hmm. of the song that, that Shelley sang just a couple of weeks ago about uh, may all who come behind us find us oh, faithful. Yeah. Yeah. It really touched my heart Beautiful because it, it's a real responsibility for us as adults. But kids are a, a big joy and uh, it's fun to watch them grow up. Yes. Praise God. Thank you, Miss Daisy. Thank you. Thank you, Lily and Maya. Appreciate y'all. Okay. What I'd like to encourage you to do is be intentional about this. Let's get to know our young people. Okay? A lot of them got their name tags on. If they don't have their name tags on, don't be ashamed to ask them what their name is. I have to do that. I'm still doing that. I say, oh, now, tell me your name again. Uh, and because I just, I, I just I don't have them all memorized yet. But if I keep it up, eventually I'll know who you are. Okay? I know your face. And so let's, let's do that. Let's get to know each other. Let's uh, form relationships with each other. Let the young people know that, that we care about them. And young people... Let us know that you care about us. When you, when you come up to one of us older folks and you go, Hey, how are you doing there, Pastor Rick? It lets me know that I'm somebody to you. That, that you really care about me. It means a lot uh, doing that. You know, Emmeline just touches my heart because she knows who Pastor Rick is. She, she knows who I am and that means a lot to me. And Mariella always comes up and gives me a hug. You know, she always does that. It means a lot. So... I want to finish up here with a prayer, and I'm going to get the, uh, the guys up in the sound room to help me out. I want to share uh, something that, that uh, happened this past week uh, that, that, um, that in, a, in one of the families close to us, especially um, uh, uh, one, of the fam church, one, one of the church members from the Siloam Church had a granddaughter uh, that, that was, she had a, a sc sc scoliosis. Uh, her her back was bent. Uh, Seifert's Don and Linda are you know know this family and and everything or know know Gary and everything. Have you put that up on the screen, guys? Put the yeah, put the okay. This right here. Let me let me read this to you and kind of paint the picture. I think it'll touch your heart here. This young girl named Allison. She's around 13 years old and and she's she's getting ready to have surgery at the Children's Hospital in Little Rock. Now she didn't. She, I don't think she had, was really, I don't think her family, and I, 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 I hesitate saying this, but I don't think they probably was around a church family a whole lot, and, and here this young girl was going through this. And listen to what she, she wrote this on her Facebook page. She says, I have realized something recently. I've always wondered how so many people can be fearless. And I think I found my answer, God. I have been so scared of my surgery, and it's led me to putting a lot of trust in God. I let, I, I let fear hit me hard, but I decided that's enough. I asked God to give me enough strength to hate fear and what it does to me, to give me the strength to deal with it, and, and to get me to the place where I can be set free of fear. Not, not, not to change me, but to change my heart. When I did this, it opened my eyes. I walked into the hospital today scared and walked out confident. Confident that God was right by my side. So as I go back to the hospital tomorrow, because she, she was getting tomorrow to have her surgery, I will walk in 
and know that God is holding my hand through it all. Now here this young girl, 13-year-old girl, do you see what she wrote? Her mother now. Her mother was in the room beside her, and I think somehow or another the, 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 she could see her daughter laying on the bed, and, and then and her, mother, her mother wrote this. She says, uh, I was sitting in the hotel room reading this post my daughter had posted on Facebook. I mean, that's the generation we're living in. I mean, this daughter's on Facebook, the mom's on Facebook, but they're reading the post, reading her post. I look over at her, and through the closed curtains, closed curtains, a rainbow is shining in over her. All is well at that moment. This is Allison's mom. Uh, so I got a picture of that. See the, see the picture of the rainbow here? She took a picture of this. <coughs> Young people, I want you to know that God cares about you. He cares about you and He hears your prayers. Mom and dads, you're praying for your wayward children. You got something going on in your life. You're concerned about your children. God cares. God cares. We serve a God that cares. Let's go to God in prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for once again revealing your love. Lord, we, we are so blessed and thankful that we are part of the family of God. Thank you for the whole family. All of our children, all of our, all of our teenagers, all of our young adults, our young mom and dads, and, and all of us older folks. Thank you that we can all be part of a family that's going to last forever. Please, dear God, give us love for one another. Give us uh, patience to deal with one another. And help us dare to look at another's point of view. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.